Kara Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Today we will show you how to create this beautiful sunset scene with just two colors. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette we have dioxazine violet and quinacridone gold and a dark premix of dioxazine violet and quinacridone gold. Color alternatives are listed below. Violet and yellow are complementary colors. This means that they sit opposite or across from each other on a standard color wheel. Using these colors together will create a higher contrast compared to using other color combinations. Being opposite, these two colors attract and complement each other nicely. But if you mix complementary colors together, they cancel each other out and produce a more uniform color in the grayscale spectrum. This is why the mixture of dioxazine violet and quin gold could produce this beautiful dark gray brown. The Fabriano paper is on a block. The block is placed on an old lever arch file to give it an angle of about 45 degrees. At this slant, the paint will flow gently downwards and blend easily on the paper. Use a large flat brush like a hake or a mop to wet the paper thoroughly from the top to about two thirds down to create a wet surface up to the horizon line. Look at the paper from an angle to ensure that you have not missed any spots. Use a large brush and the brownish mix to paint the sky. Start with a stronger mix at the top. The paper is very wet so if you use a weak mixture it will simply disperse into the wet surface and not give you enough color to work with. Add some pure violet and use some clean water to help the paint spread. Make your brush strokes from the outside to the middle to create depth. Clean the brush and then add long strokes of pure quin gold. Blend this gently into the violet areas to make a smooth transition. Make sure that the top of the sky is darker and that the hues become lighter as you work towards the horizon line. The quick sweeping strokes in the sky will create a soft cloudy effect. Try to keep the horizon line fairly straight. Add darker pigment to the top if needed and allow it to blend naturally. Rinse the brush and dab it on a paper towel to get rid of the excess water. Now use the tip of the large brush to add a tree line in the background. It is important that your brush is not too wet. You are now adding paint to a damp surface, so if the brush is too wet, it will cause blooms. Dab the paint in lightly with the tip of the brush. Form small tree shapes and allow the paint to spread. Create interest by adding small amounts of all the colors from the palette. 
to keep the illusion of distance. Make your tree line higher on the outsides and lower towards the middle. Allow the painting to dry. Don't be afraid to use enough pigment during your first wash. As you can see, the paint dries back to a much more muted hue than when it was wet. Use a large brush again, and now you can wet the foreground. Here you want to mimic the sky onto the terrain in front. So you will start on the horizon line with a quin gold and then work towards the front with the violet, making the same kind of brush strokes that you had in the sky. Use clean water to wet the top of the page gently with a brush to help a bit with the transition from the horizon line to the foreground. It is best to wet the entire area to avoid creating a hard water line in the sky. Intensify the sky a bit more if you want to by adding another layer of paint onto the wet surface. The water has settled a bit in the foreground now, so you can start to define the terrain by adding strokes of paint from your palette. Use all three of the colors to bring variation into the terrain. Use stronger pigment in the front. You are going to add salt soon, so make sure that you have enough pigment and moisture for the salt to work. Wait a little bit for the paint to settle and the sheen is off. The paper should be damp, not shiny wet. Then add a few sprinkles of ordinary table salt. If your paper has wet pools, the salt will clump in the pools and make a hard crust, which is unsightly and very difficult to remove. The salt will basically lift the pigment as it absorbs the water to create lovely textures and contrasts. Some pigments lift easier than others, so you will sometimes get quite unexpected results. 
allow the painting to dry and then brush off the excess salt. You can see the beautiful feathery effect created by the salt. Now you can use a rigger or a very fine thin brush to add a bit of detail to the trees in the background. Remember that you want to create distance, so the detail should be faint and kept to a minimum. You can define the terrain a bit more with a few strokes down the paper. The salt has created small bursts of flowers in the foreground. You can use the dark paint to draw stems underneath some of the flowers. Use the patterns created by the salt to guide you. Add some darker paint to the immediate foreground or the immediate front to ground the flowers. Here you should use the first layers as an indication of which paints to use. Add a bit more Quin Gold if you want lighter patches and more Violet if you want darker patches. Always keep your brush strokes light. If you press too hard, you will lift the layers underneath. Your painting needs a focal point. You also need to make sure that your composition is balanced. In this case, the tree line on the left seems a little more prominent than the one on the right. So to even things out, the tree is placed on the right side of the painting. Use the dark mix and the rigor or thin brush to paint the tree. You can start with a trunk and press a bit harder at the base, then lift the brush as you move upwards to thin it out into the branches. If you are skilled with a rigger, you can draw the branches from the outside in, but it is easier to work from the trunk outwards. Press harder where you start the branch from the trunk and then lift the brush as you move the, uh, towards the tip of the branch. Use the tip of the brush to lightly add some twigs. Make some of the branches darker and others lighter to give your tree dimension.
the light is coming from the middle so the darker side of the tree will be on the right add a bit of darker paint to give the tree a shadow side add a few strokes of paint to the base of the tree to ground it the dark branches will stand out nicely against the lighter golden background giving your painting some depth You can add a few more trees on the left to draw the eye more into the painting but make sure to keep these light and much less detailed. Use darker paint to make some shadows along the contours of your first layer. This will define the terrain a bit more and make it look more natural. You can use the belly of the brush to make a few upward strokes and then blend it out with your finger to make some grass patches or small bushes. Add a few more shadows here and there to make it more interesting. Sometimes it can be challenging to work with a limited palette, but it is a good way to practice how to play light against dark to create dimension in your work. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.